so far we have seen that any periodic signal any continuous time periodic signal can be represented with the help of fourier series coefficients now let's ask ourselves the question that is that any signal can be represented with the help of fourier series so this any is a problem so earlier we made a claim that any let me write that any periodic signal any continuous time time periodic signal can be represented using fourier series or a set of harmonically related complex exponentials we have seen we have made this claim so far and we have seen some examples how we can represent the continuous time periodic signal using fourier series now is that true that any periodic signal can be represented with the help of fourier series so this very strong claim that we are making it here so the truth is that not all the signals can be represented with the help of fourier series so it's not any but most most of the periodic signals can be represented with the help of fourier series when i say most of the periodic signals can be represented then again the question arises that which are those signals that cannot be represented with the help of fourier series or we may ask that what is the condition that guarantees the representation of fourier series that's the topic that we are going to see in this module we are going to see that what are those conditions which guarantees the representation of the signal using fourier series those conditions were given by p l dirichlet a scientist and mathematician you can say these conditions were given by p l dirichlet and those conditions are called as dirichlet conditions dirichlet conditions are the set of conditions that guarantees the fourier series representation of a periodic signal let me list those conditions here the first condition that dirichlet mentioned was that the first condition dirichlet mentioned was that so these are the conditions for so let me write that dirichlet conditions are the conditions dirichlet conditions guarantees the representation of periodic signal using fourier series so let's see what are those conditions the first condition dirichlet mentioned was that the first condition was that the signal that is under consideration so if x of t is a periodic signal then that signal must be absolutely integrable over a period that means integration over a period t t not you can say of the signal it must be absolutely integrable so this integration must be a finite value 
What does this mean? Uh, the signal which we are trying to represent using Fourier series must be absolutely integrable. If I take its absolute value and they take a integration or a period t naught, then this value, this integration must be a finite value. This is the very first condition that Dirichlet have, have made. Another condition that Dirichlet said was that the second condition that Dirichlet said was that x of t must have finite number of maximas and minimas. So the signal under consideration that is x of t must have finite number of maximas and minimas, the extremas, you can say. The third condition that Dirichlet mentioned was that x of t must have finite number of finite discontinuities. That means must have finite number of finite discontinuities let's try to analyze these conditions one by one the first condition that Dirichlet said was that so these conditions are actually the conditions that guarantee the representation of Fourier series, the representation of periodic signal using Fourier series. What Dirichlet said was that if a signal satisfies all of these three conditions, then you can guarantee that that signal can be represented using Fourier series. So let's see these conditions one by one. The first condition says that the signal in order for this for a series representation of a periodic signal, the signal itself must be absolutely integrable over a period t naught. So let's take an example of a signal that is not absolutely integrable. <coughs> so example. So we are analyzing the first Dirichlet condition. The first Dirichlet condition says that <coughs> the signal must be absolutely integrable. That means x of t must be absolutely integrable. So let's take an example of a signal that is not absolutely integrable over a period. So let's take example something like this. Let's say I'm having a signal. Like this. Or a period of one and let's say this signal repeats after one units so the period here is one so the signal is something like this and so on so this signal is you can see that this is minus one one and two there so the signal repeats after the time period of one. So the signal is periodic with time period of one units. Now you can see that and this representation let it be one upon t. So x of t here is equals to one upon t for t from zero to one. can see that the signal as it approaches 0 as t approaches 0 this signal goes out of bound 
and hence the integration of this signal over this period is not a finite value therefore this signal is not absolutely integrable and hence the Fourier series representation is not possible here so the signal is not absolutely integrable over a period let's take another example another example I'm taking of a signal that may be absolutely integrable but might not satisfy other properties so let's take an example of a signal something like this I'm trying to represent a signal which violates the second Dirichlet condition. So we have already seen a signal that violates the first Dirichlet condition. Now we are going to see a signal that violates the second Dirichlet condition. Now the second Dirichlet condition says that the signal itself must have finite number of maximas and minimas. Let's take a signal which has infinite number of maximas and minimas. So a signal could be something like this. Let's suppose I'm having a signal like a sinusoid whose frequency increases as the period approaches. So let's have a sinusoid whose period increases with time. Something like this. You can see that after a certain time, this signal shuttles between two values and it's very difficult to find what is the value of this signal at as t increases so this signal let it be in a period say one units so this signal here is one unit and this signal mathematically can be represented as say x of t x of t being equals to say sine of 1 by t you can see that as t increases t increases to 1 so as t increases the frequency must decrease so which i should draw it in a alternate way so it's like this i'm drawing this in an alternate way so the signal is like this so frequency increases as the time approaches zero So something like that. So this is one here and zero there. And let's suppose the signal repeats after this. So the signal is x of t equals to sine of one by t. And this signal is periodic with a period of 1 now this signal you can see that there are infinite number of maximas and minimas here as you can see that as t approaches 0 the frequency is so high that the signal shuttles between two points at the same t so for this signal we cannot find the Fourier series representation as we are not aware of what values it will take at as t approaches 0 so this signal x p of t or x of t here violates the second Dirichlet condition 
So the first signal that we have considered here was violating the first Dirichlet condition. That means the signal was not absolutely integral. But the second signal that we are seeing here, the second example, this signal is absolutely integrable within a period of one units. But this signal violates the second Dirichlet condition that is the signal must have finite number of minimas and maximas. So this signal have infinite number of maximas and minimas. Therefore, we cannot find the Fourier series equivalent of this signal just because we are not aware what are going to be the values of this signal. Therefore, the first, the first example violates violation of first Dirichlet condition. Whereas the second one violates second Dirichlet condition. So it violates second Dirichlet condition. Although it satisfies the first Dirichlet condition, it violates second Dirichlet condition. Let's take an example that violates third Dirichlet condition. Let's take a signal, something like this, a staircase kind of signal. So let's say the signal is reducing its amplitude with its duration. So the signal amplitude goes half as the duration is increased. That means, say for example, if the initial amplitude is 1 unit, the next amplitude is going to be 0.5 units and for half the duration of the initial one. So this is half the duration. So the signal is going to be something like this. And again, let's say the signal reduces in the amplitude half and for half duration. And let's suppose this goes on. And that too for a period. So let's define a period, let's say here, some period here. Let's say T naught. Now, what's wrong with this signal? Now, let's say this signal repeats can see that there's a point of discontinuity here is a point of discontinuity here and so on so the there are infinite number of discontinuities in this signal over a period and that should not be there so as we can see from the third Dirichlet condition x of t must have finite number of finite discontinuities what does that mean a signal so this must be true over a period so you can see that this in the signal, although they are discontinuities and although they are finite, but they are not finite in number. So these discontinuities are infinite. There are infinite number of discontinuities present in the signal for a period. And that we don't want. We can see that from the third Dirichlet condition, a signal must have finite number of discontinuities. And not only that, all those discontinuities must be finite in nature just because we know that discontinuities may be infinite also we don't want that we want the discontinuity number to be a finite quantity and each of these discontinuities must be finite 
so we must have finite number of finite discontinuities and that condition is violated here you can see that there are infinite number of discontinuities here so the third example here violates the third Dirichlet condition so third Dirichlet condition is violated Although it satisfies first two conditions, the first two conditions is that this signal must be absolutely integrable, yes it is. And the second Dirichlet condition is that it must have finite number of maximas and minimas, that's fine. But what about the, the third Dirichlet condition? The third Dirichlet condition says that it must have finite number of finite discontinuities that is not the case here so the Dirichlet conditions are violated here such signals cannot be represented using Fourier series you can see from these examples that such signals are very rarely seen in nature we are hardly see such kind of signals and most of the signals that we are going to see in this course are going to have the Fourier series representation except some subtle signals or those signals are called as pathological in nature so those signals hardly exist in practice and we shall assume that most of the periodic signals can be represented using the Fourier series and the conditions that drive the representation of the signal using Fourier series are called as Dirichlet conditions which says that the signal must be absolutely integrable, the signal must have finite number of maximas and minimas and it must have finite number of discontinuities in which each of those discontinuities are finite in nature. These are the conditions and as these conditions guarantee the representation of Fourier series, these are called as sufficient conditions of representation the Fourier series representation so these are the sufficient conditions for Fourier series representation The sufficient conditions means that this condition actually guarantees the representation of Fourier series. Let's stop here.